Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be demoing the new beta for Flowtelic. Flowtelic is the note-taking app that I'm working on, and I just wanna showcase what the app can do, and basically uh, what you can use it for if you wanna dive in and see what it's like. So to start with, you don't have much to look at when you first start, and don't worry, this is just because it's an early beta. There will be some onboarding and all of that. It will look way more pretty when basically I've done the challenge of making something that's really useful and fun to use. So this is the beta. And the concept here is that you have a range of collections and they will sit down the left-hand side and will create the, your first collection in a moment. You have your note, your workflow, you have your note list, you have your preview, and then there's the main note. And there's a few things we can configure. I'm just gonna turn off the preview panel um, and I'm gonna have the navigation, the note list, and edit. And we'll work with that to start with. So first of all, you wanna create a collection. And this could be, for example, my second brain. So I can create that. The workflow at the moment is just the Zettelkasten inspired. It's not using the true terminology for Zettelkasten, but the idea is you create atomic notes. And I'll be doing a walkthrough of that in a moment using Flowtelic. Uh, the idea here is that this will have a range of different workflows. So you can have different note types, workflow states, all these things. And uh, eventually you'll be able to configure your own, which will be really exciting. So we're going to create this one here called the second brain. And now we've got an understanding of what this workflow has. For example, you have your capture phase where you take your notes in, you're recording your thoughts on, say, articles and books and all those kind of things. I call those ideas, so things I just want to capture, or study notes, things I'm studying. Then there's the archive, so this is where I'm putting things into my main storage. So I can have index notes, so I can file them in a way that I can recover or recall where I put all my notes. Permanent notes is just your collection of main body of notes, and using the Zettelkasten way of thinking, a permanent note is a small atomic note. Uh, that if you were to look at it in isolation, it would make sense. And then you can link it to other things. You may have references. So this is just something that you, you just want to reference, like a, a web link that you want to use in multiple places and things like that. There's projects. So for me, this is when if I'm going to write a blog post, for example, I can create a project. And here we've got the workflow. I can say they're in progress. It's on my backlog. Or I just got some notes about a project. So basically, I have a project and I can link in uh, my project notes. And then things like artifacts. If I just want to record, say, a book I'm reading or some people I'm referencing, like an author, the uh, the benefits of that is then I can link to them and then I can look at that person and see all my notes about it or look at that book and see all the notes that I've made about it. And then here we have basically everything. So this is just the collection of everything. So let's create our first note. And here we can create any one of these kinds of things. So to start with, I'm just going to create an idea note. So and then we get to the main editor. So an idea note. Uh, this could be um, uh, things I love about note taking. And then I might just create a list. So for example, uh, it might be um, you don't have to oh, have to remember everything. Uh, it's easy to access again later. So this is just an idea. Um, in a Zettelkasten way of thinking, we'd call that a fleeting note. Um, and basically, I have a very simple text editor to record what I want. Now, this is an early beta, obviously, and what is on the roadmap is to make this way better in terms of note taking, drop images in and format things. But at the moment, it's uh, markdown inspired, so I could do a heading two, double heading, so hash hash, uh, second heading, etc. Um, things like bullet point lists, numbered lists, that will be coming, just not in this beta. So for now, um, it's great for recording just the raw notes and not really worrying too much about the formatting of it. And then each note on the right hand side here, you have uh, the properties panel. So for example, I could change the note type of that and I can change the workflow state. So I can say that's ready to process, for example. And you can see that reflected in the note list. Or if I really want to, I can pin the note. We'll come to that in a bit. So yeah, um, this is a very simple kind of view of how to create your notes and do things like that, like that. But I might want to link this note to something else. So let's say I have another idea on um, uh, apps to use for note taking. 
So I, I can create a link using the double square brackets. This is a very common format. If you use Obsidian, for example, that will do a similar thing. And then here I can then create a new, say, idea note based on that. And then I could have, obviously, flow, sorry, can't speak and talk at the, speak and write at the same time. Uh, Flotelic, Obsidian, uh, can't, okay, and so on and so forth. Now, I've basically got this note here and I've linked to there and I can go and click that link and then open that. And that's a way to navigate between. If I want to go back and forth, I can do that with the arrows in the top corner, which is nice and simple. So uh, the idea is that I don't want you to suddenly get disorientated by navigating around. I want it to be an explicit action if you want to open a note. Now, one of the really powerful things with Flotelic that I absolutely love doing is creating study notes. So let's say I create a study note here. Um, and let's say I want to study an article and I'll pick one of my own that I have been working with. So evolve your thinking. And then I could just put the link in here. So this is my blog, meta.io, and then evolve your thinking. So I could put the link in. And that's all very well and good. But what I can do is I can, when I click that link, I get uh, open preview. And what that will do, uh, I've already got it cached in my browser here, but it will take a little bit longer where I can have the option to get a readability mode of that article. So you get a nice consistent way of viewing things like um, web articles. Um, and you know, basically it's a best effort to try and pull this out. And now I can go through and start making my notes about this article. So for example, I could say um, DNA of ideas and then just create a you know, one, two, like the bullet point list of that. And then when I'm ready, um, uh, I can change the workflow state. If I've, if I've recorded those notes, I can say it's ready to process. So let's think about that for a moment. If I have notes and note types and workflow states, this is where we have focus mode. So if I tap this button here, we get the recommendations for today. So this is in the Zettelkast and workflow state. So thinking longer term, you'll be able to create your own parameters around you know, the workflow states and the study sessions and the kind of a uh, time boxed efforts that you want to put into your, into your note taking, essentially. So here I have my study session because I have one note which is ready to study. I can do that. I've got an organized idea. So I've got that idea that I created earlier. I could organize that. And then eventually I could organize my study notes when they're ready to process. I could work on a project. So, and if I want to go and do say 15 minutes of studying, I do that. And then I get a distraction free view called focus mode in Flotelic, which is amazing. And now I can put my music on and I can set a timer I use a absolutely recommend getting a time timer. I could say 15 minutes on the clock and just go through and start making notes on those articles. One of the things I find really interesting when it comes to kind of the web and capturing and seeing articles and all that is they, they sort of build up in a backlog of things that you know that you want to read, but you don't get around to reading yet. And this is something, sorry, my time is just going off there. And this is something that I really want to um, let Flotelic help with that. So you have your idea, your, your concept of kind of putting things in your inbox, and I call this like the capture phase. And then you go through and you just start doing your study sessions, uh, processing your ideas, and you gradually start filtering it down into your permanent notes. If I had more, more than one of these, I could go through left and right. I can, and then once I've, I've done this, I can say, well, I've done that study note, now I can, it's ready to process, move on to the next thing. So then the next time I want to do a session, I could go into say organizing my study notes. And then this view here now has my study note in the middle, sorry, my study note pinned to the right hand side, the notes that I then want to go into permanent notes. And I can start using the mechanism here to start organizing those into my permanent notes. So I might have a DNA, DNA of ideas note here, uh, and I could end up you know, because I've studied it, I might want to rephrase it. I might want to or copy and paste and, and then start building up my what we call a slip box in Zettel in the Zettelcast world, you know, my archive of kind of concrete ideas that I want to I want to persist. 
And again, once I've studied that, I can just mark that as complete. And, you know, talking about future ideas, what I want to do is be able to have those kind of metrics and feedback loop of, you know, making sure that you're not capturing too many things, but not processing them, that you get the right balance of working on your note taking so that eventually you can come to doing your projects. So a project note, sorry, a project. Um, let's create a new project here. So I'm just going to turn off the preview panel so we get to see that. Uh, a, let's say I want to write a, a blog post, uh, evolve your thinking. And then what I would do here is link in my, um, my permanent notes that I want to cover, outline it in here, and I'll do more of that in an example in, a, in another video. Um, outline it, and then you can start writing your, your project notes. So if I want to say, um, okay, the article, uh, sorry, it's a bad name there, and then create a project note from that. And now, now my project, so I've realized that it's there. There it is. So there's my project. Um, this could be the outline, for example, or all my notes on it that I want to talk about. And then uh, I might have the article. And essentially, I want to build up the contents of this. And again, because this is a project and I could say it's in progress, I can go to my focus session and then go work on this project and start kind of building it out, navigating through, this is the main project. These are the things I'm currently working on in the context of that. And I can navigate around and kind of link things in and all of that. So, and then the, the idea here is that projects can become your thinking, your output. This could be a blog post, YouTube video. If you're writing a book, it could be, you know, parts, chapters of a book, for example, um, whatever it is, basically. So yeah, this is the overview. The only other thing to mention is that you have two other sidebar panels, so pinned notes. Let's say I wanted to pin this note just so as I'm going through, um, I might want to pin that one and you can pin multiple. And if I just want to expand that, I double, double click it and it makes it full length rather than uh, um, truncated. And yeah, basically now when I navigate around, I've got my pinned notes there. And that's nice and simple. And then the other panel are my notes stack. I'll just turn off the pin notes. So when I'm looking at a note and it's got links to other things, it basically previews that in the references. Or if you've got a backlink, it'll preview what's backlinking to it, which is pretty cool. So it means then if I'm working on a project, then it's you know nice and simple to kind of see the outline of, of all the contents of what I'm working on. This is an area that I'm exploring and experimenting with, and I'm going to make it better. Uh, I've got some ideas of workspaces where you can kind of lay out your notes. I imagine it like a tabletop where you're laying out your cards and seeing the big picture and kind of working on them in that sense. I, th I think that's going to be quite exciting to kind of add into Flowtelic. But for right now, you've got your um, very quick outline uh, and preview of those notes. When it comes to um, the preview panel, you can also embed things like YouTube videos and they'll go in the preview panel here and you can watch a video, make notes, pause it, make notes, etc. And uh, the only other thing is you can create multiple collections. So I might have my second brain, maybe I'm working on something about I don't know, it's up to you ultimately, but I like to separate kind of my personal knowledge management. Um, I have like one on Flowtelic itself, so I, you know, tracking things and ideas about Flowtelic. I like to use it to kind of spec out uh, features and what the requirements are. Like, I love doing that in Flowtelic because it's really fluid. And uh, I might have things like technical notes. So if I'm just learning something, oh, I've just learned this new command of how to do something on my Mac, for example, I'll create a note so I can recall that later. So next time I have that problem or need to use that functionality, I can go and recall it. These are areas that I gain, I want to explore more where you're taking a collection, putting it into a domain specific. Right now, it's it lends itself to more kind of um, non-fiction kind of productivity, ideas and things like that. When you move into the more technology sense, you might want to have code snippets and gain all these things. I want to be adding into the editor um, to make sure that works. And the other thing, just to um, make sure uh, that you understand this with the beta, until there's accounts and cloud sync and a desktop app, 
uh, right now all these notes are stored within the browser and if you want to save those you can right click and go export collection that will download a zip file and within that zip file you will find all your notes as markdown files so now you can go and take these into another app if, if you want to back them up you can do that and what I do is every after every session I just do an export save it somewhere so that I know if my browser decided to clear its you know, local storage and things like that that I have those backed up um, this is a temporary problem with the app because it's an early beta there will be cloud sync and there will be a desktop app version so those files will be on your computer in a more permanent sense and then if you want to bring those notes back in so if I say another collection uh, or if I've got notes from elsewhere potentially go to my notes select all of those and just drag those in and there they appear and now I can use use them uh, and continue if you've been using the current version of Flowtelic so I might have my second brain here I can just export this down in here I use emojis for my second brain um, uh, so the file name is a, is a brain.zip, which is quite amusing. And then if I wanted to recreate that uh, on the Mac, it's command, control, command, space, select the brain, stick it in, save that, select that collection, and then I can just, in theory, drag those in. And it will import all those notes into Flowtelic. So yeah, this is basically a rundown of Flowtelic, the new beta. Uh, the other major change that's in this is it's now web ready. Lots more testing until, and this is the preparation for Cloud Sync, so you can log into your notes on your smartphone. And I'll just preview that here if I snap this down into a browser mode. So let's say it's a, an iPhone. Um, now you can see how you can basically manipulate your notes things like the references the backlinks and the pin notes end up you know in a, in a view here um, and you can edit the properties and there's a the ability to navigate all the different note types there the collections you can add collections the only subtle difference is you can do study sessions on your phone but you can't do organized sessions because it's a bit too crammed on a smartphone. Um, maybe maybe in the future I can figure out how to get that in, but, but for now, do a study session. So for example, uh, oh, as, as you can tell, there's a few, few tweaks that are needed to, to make that fully ready. But the idea here is that if you've got a spare 10 minutes and you're just on your phone, start reading an article in, in the sidebar that comes out, make your notes in the app, and yeah, try and bring more of that functionality down into the mobility of, your, uh, your, of where you take your notes. There you go. That is the new beta of Flowtelic. If you want to follow along, uh, go head over to join.flowtelic.com, drop your email in, and uh, that's when I'll give updates over email of how Flowtelic is going. And if you want to really kind of um, get more involved and give feedback, then head over to meta.io forward slash community forward slash join. And if you sign up there, that will get you into the community where it's called uh, Autodidact and Mastery. Autodidact mean basically the joy of self-learning and mastery is to basically use knowledge in a great way. I use that to teach the Zettelkasten note-taking method as well as allowing you to give feedback on the beta and basically let's just learn things together and have a community feel to it all. So, I hope you've enjoyed it and catch you in the next one.